Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing how we can utilize uh, the identity in our .NET 8 web applications. We're gonna be seeing how much more simpler it is for us to add identity with .NET 8 and how we can actually utilize it inside our application. So let's get started. Inside my terminal, I wanna create my application. So I'm gonna put .NET new web API dash controllers dash name. I'm gonna call this sample API. Oops controllers of got the yes okay perfect now i'm gonna open it up in rider okay perfect so now my application has opened in rider there's a few packages that i would like to install but before let's just do a quick build and we can see everything has built successfully okay great so what i want to do is i want to open my terminal let's just make this a bit higher okay perfect so the first one is going to be dot net add package microsoft dot asp net core dot identity dot entity framework core that's going to be the first one and we can see it has installed successfully now i'm going to install the second one which is going to be dot not add package microsoft dot entity framework core dot sqlite because that's what we're going to be utilizing and the last one let's clear this up so it's going to be almost the same one but we're going to be utilizing that design Okay, great. So now that we have installed these three packages, let's check them out inside my CS Proj. So edit CS Proj. And here, as you can see, I have my three different packages available for me. So I have my identity entity framework, I have my design, and I have my SQLite. Okay, great. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna add a new directory. So I'm gonna click add directory, and I'm gonna call this models. And this is going to be the user that I'm going to be utilizing for my authentication. And I'm going to call this app user. And inside this app user, all I'm going to be doing is inheriting from the identity user class. That's all. All I'm not going to do anything else except adding inheriting from the identity user class. And the reason I'm doing this because if I want to customize this class later on, I want to add like a username. I want to add like a different uh, personal information. I can add it directly through here. But right now, I'm just going to take the default implementation. Next, I'm going to add another directory. And I'm going to call this my data directory and i'm gonna add a new class and this class is going to be called app db context and inside this app db context the first thing that i want to have is the identity db context and i want to pass to it my app user that i just created perfect the next step is i need to create my constructor for my db context and this is going to be the simple one which is going to be db context options i'm going to use my app user and this is going to be the options and then what we need to do is we need to pass it. Actually, this needs to be my app DB contacts. And all I need to do is pass this back to the base and I pass the options. Perfect. So now what I have here is I have my DB context where I'm inheriting the identity DB context. And it's really important to utilize the identity DB context because this is where all of the table is going to be generated. And then from there, what I'm doing, I'm just specifying the constructor. So this is going to be the main foundation that I'm going to be needing to have my application up and running uh, when it comes to my database structure. Now what I want to do is I want to go to my program.cs and start doing some configuration here in order for me to take advantage of the identity stuff that I need to have as well in order for me to add the configuration for my database so let's get started so first things first i want to start adding my authentication so i'm going to put add authentication i'm going to put builder.services.add authentication and when i want to utilize i want to utilize bearer token so i'm going to say add bearer token and then from the constants here what i want to do is identity identity constants and i'm, I'm going to utilize the bearer schema so basically with this line, one single line here, I was able to add now authentication to my application. So that's gonna be the first thing. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add my authorization. So I'm gonna put add authorization, authorization. I'm gonna put builder.services.add authorization builder. Okay, perfect. So now that I have configured my authentication, I configured my authorization, the next step is I want to configure now my application DB contacts. So I'm going to say configure DB contacts. I'll scan builder.services.addb contacts. And it's going to be my app DB contacts I specified before. Now I want to specify the options for it. I'm going to say options.use SQLite. Perfect. 
And what I'm gonna be doing, let's make sure it's visible here. Okay, let's zoom in a bit. Maybe it's a bit zoomed out. Okay, let's put this on a new line so you'll be able to see it better. Okay, great. So all I wanna do right now here is inside my SQLite, I'm just gonna add my connection string. And this connection string is gonna be data source equal to app data db perfect so now i have basically what i've done here i have configured my application to utilize my application db context and to utilize this connection string as my source for my database okay so now that we have done this there's another builder service that i need to add which is going to be builder dot services add identity core and here we're going to specify that my identity core is going to be relying on the app user and then what i want to do here is put add identity uh, entity framework stores and we're going to be relying on the application to be contacts and lastly i'm going to put the api utilization so add api endpoints and basically what i'm doing here is for the add identity core what i'm telling it is that it needs to add the identity for my app users and then i'm telling it to configure to configure everything for the identity utilizing my database db contacts and then here and this is the really exciting part i'm telling it to automatically generate the endpoints that are needed in order for me to actually utilize my identity within my application so rather me having to create them and then map, doing all of the mapping for them i'm basically telling it that create those endpoints and i'm going to be able to utilize them so now once we have done that the last step is I need to do is I need to map everything. So I'm going to put app.map identity API. I'm going to specify my app user here. And that should be it. So this is all of the work that I need to do in order for me to add, add full identity to my application. Again, we're utilizing here the default implementation. We're not gonna, we're not doing any customization, but this is just to show you how easy it is to directly get started with it. So next step, what I want to do is I want to start adding my migration. So I'm going to put dot .NET EF migrations add and here i'm going to say initial migration and this is basically it's going to allow us to create all of the database structure that we need uh, into our database okay perfect and now we can see here we're going to have a migration folder being created for us and we can see here this is going to be the initial migration and uh, we can see all of the tables that are going to be created we're going to be exploring them in details once they are created i'm going to put now we need to apply this migration so i'm going to put a clear dot not ef database update and this will basically allow me to implement this migration and have a now you should be able to see a database popping up here and this database is basically my new app data db so now if i open this up my sqlite database i'm gonna connect to it and here on the right hand side we can see i have my database if i open this we can see all of the tables that has been automatically created for me i have not defined this i have not created them manually entity framework core took control of this and he created them because basically again in my application db contact i have inherited the identity db contacts class and this is basically where all of these came from so we can see i have roles i have user claims i have isp.net users etc etc so all of this has been automatically created for me perfect i'm just going to keep this to the side i'm gonna close this and now the most exciting part so what i want to do is i'm gonna run this inside my browser okay perfect i'm gonna open this so now inside my browser as you can see i have everything created for me so i have all of my endpoint for my user management register login refresh for my uh, refresh tokens email confirmation etc etc so all of these has been automatically created for me i did not create any of them uh, let's see now if you want to create register a user so i'm gonna click on try it out I'm going to register my email, muhammad at test.com. My password is going to be password11. I'm just going to copy this in case I'm going to use it later. Click on execute. We can see we got a 200. It means successfully. Now, if I go back here, check my database, asp.net users. We can see I have Muhammad available for me. We can see that has been registered successfully inside my database. And now if I want to log in, let's go to the login, try it out. It's gonna ask me, do you wanna use cookie? I'm gonna say false, use session cookie false. I'm gonna basically just utilize my email and my password that I have utilized before. First of all, I'm gonna put a the correct one. So I'm gonna click on execute. Actually, let's put first the wrong one. So I'm gonna add another one here, execute. And we have seen here that we have an unauthorized because it's a wrong password. Then I'm gonna put the correct password, click on execute. And here we have seen, okay, we got a talking back. So we got the bearer token that we have specified inside our program.cs because here what we have, let's make this smaller so we can see it. 
So if we take a look at this one here, what we have done is when we have configured it, we said it's going to be a barrier scheme token. So just to make a note here, this is not a JWT token. It is a barrier token. So there's a difference there, uh, but this is the token that we're going to be utilizing here. It's going to be a barrier token. It's not a JWT token because it's got the different claims and how everything is being uh, embedded into this is going to be different. It has a bit of the same structure, but just so we know here, this is not going to be a JWT token. So here, as you can see, automatically I got back an access token. I was able to see even my refresh token in order for me to keep my user signed in rather than always trying to ask him for a login in. So if we take, if we think about like uh, your Gmail application on your phone or your Outlook application on your phone, you don't really have to, every time you open your application, you have to log in, it's automatically logged in. And the way it's done that is that once you authenticate it the first time, you get two types of token. You get your access token and you get a refresh token. And uh, access token is a short lived token, which only valid for a certain amount of time like maybe five to ten seconds or maybe a minute even uh, but the refresh token is a long-lived token which can live up to like a month depending on your configuration and from there you're able to get a new access token uh, without actually asking the user to log in so now as as you can see here i got my access token uh, within the current implementation we did not implement any types of authorization so let's do this right now so we can actually test the token so i'm going to do here is inside my controller i have one single control which automatically generated for me so the first thing that i want to do is i want to add my authorize and that way it means that i'm not able to access this without any proper authorization so now if we go back here and if i refresh this one here actually without refreshing if we go all the way down to weather forecast click on try it out if i try to get the forecast right now it says i don't have access to it so now what we're going to do is we want to add some authentication to this so enable for me to get access to this so and this is going to be pretty straightforward but uh, because i have not configured swagger to take my input i'm going to utilize insomnia to do this okay perfect so what i want to do is i want to add a new request http request and uh, let me take the url that i am calling so i'm just going to call the weather forecast url again i'm just going to do a simple call here we should get a 401 unauthorized and all i'm going to doing here is side my authorization i'm going to click on add bearer token and this is going to be the token that's generated i'm going to go back to swagger and i'm going to log in again to get the fresh token because i think this one was already expired okay perfect now we got my access token we can copy this i'm just going to put it here and click on send and now because i have added the right access token i was able to directly get the information back from my api so within this we are able to see how easy it is for us to add authentication authorization to our application again within this video we have only went through the default uh, implementation if you'd like me to delve more into a custom implementation of identity please let me know i'll be more than happy to add this but the main important thing here is we have seen how with dotnet 8 it has been much more simplified to add authentication authorization to our application within a few lines of code and a few different configuration we're able to do this basically in 15 minutes we had a full fledged authentication system working within our api i hope this video was helpful please like share and subscribe if it was if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buying me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day